Hello and welcome to class number 31 of the UPSC Prelims 2024 Quick Revision Series, a series where we have been revising the current affairs of last 365 days. We have already had 30 classes so far and if you have missed out on any one of those, I highly recommend you that go to the description of this video where I have given a link of the entire playlist. Go through that whichever class that you might have missed, please see that class as well. Do hit the subscribe button if you have not done so far and also if you need to get or if you need to download the PDF of all these classes, you can join the Telegram channel. The link is again in the description of the video where I upload PDFs of all these lectures. On that note, let's begin with the current affairs of science and technology that we have been doing for the past couple of classes. First, the CAR T cell therapy. <clears throat> now, this is a very, very big achievement in the treatment of cancer. So basically, some scientists in India working at IIT Bombay, <clears throat> they have been able to develop India's first homegrown CAR T cell therapy for cancer treatment. So the idea is simple. T cells are those cells that are responsible for building immunity in our body. Now the idea is that the scientists will take out certain T cells from our body. They will basically then continue to have certain gene editing in those cells. They will try and modify the characteristics of that cell. They will then multiply it and then they will insert it back into the body, hoping that now those cells will be able to fight against cancer. Not all cancer, but certain types of cancers. This therapy targets CD19, which is a biomarker for B lymphocytes. This has been granted market authorization as well. And again, the name of the technology is Nexcar 19. It is India's first indigenously developed CAR T cell technique. It is extremely important. Why? Because there are not a lot of cancer treatments available around the entire world. CAR stands for chimeric antigen receptor. And then there's T cell therapy. As I told you, the idea is to modify the patient's own T cells which form a part of the patient's immune system and to enhance their ability to understand and to recognize which are the cancer cells that they should attack and they should save their body against those cells. These T cells are cytotoxic cells and they fight against infection, they fight against illnesses. There was a lot of talk about T cells when COVID-19 crisis was at its peak, when uh, we were all talking about the T cells in the body, how to bring up their power because they are the ones who form a part of our immune system. This is how that therapy works. As I said, first T cells will be extracted from the patient's blood. Then there will be genetic modification done to express these chimeric antigen receptors and target a specific cancer antigen. These modified T cells will then be cultured. They will be multiplied. They will then be infused back into the patient's bloodstream. And then these cells eventually will bind themselves to the cancer cells and then it will lead to destruction of the immune system. Now, this is again more based on theory, although a lot of experiments have been done here. So hopefully when it rolls out in commercial scale, it will be able to give the kind of results that we have seen in lab testing conditions as well. The second news is about malaria vaccine, the Serum Institute of India has started exporting these vaccines to Africa. Now, please understand, this is not the first ever malaria vaccine. This is the second malaria vaccine. We already have a malaria vaccine that was given approval by WHO. This malaria vaccine that is being produced by Serum Institute of India is supposed to have much better result. It's supposed to give much more protection. Its uh, efficiency is much higher as compared to the first one. The first vaccine, was RTS SAS01. That was the first one which was given approval by WHO in 2021. This vaccine, the second one is R21 or Matrix M. It is specifically for prevention of malaria in children. As I said, the big difference is the efficiency. The second vaccine has been able to reach a target of 75% efficacy, which was not the case with the first vaccine. This has been developed by the University of Oxford. Serum Institute of India is the main producing partner. Then trials and partnerships have been done at European and developing countries trial clinical trial partnership. So all these have worked together. 
most of the malaria cases are found in africa and in india as well so it's now being exported to africa it has already been approved in multiple african countries such as nigeria ghana and burkina faso it will be rolled out in these african countries in 2024 that is this year and will be available in most other countries by the end of this year india also as you know has been grappling with malaria cases see malaria and these kind of diseases are directly proportional to the lack of hygiene the lack of hygiene uh, which is whichever the, uh, wherever there is found, or it's found that is where you will see these malaria cases also tropical countries which provide the climatic condition necessary for insects such as mosquito this is where you will see malaria cases that is where india african countries are much more susceptible to these kind of cases as uh, as compared to other countries like in us etc you will not see a lot of malaria cases however now with changing climate you do see certain cases popping up there and you can connect it to what happened during Co during covid-19 crisis if you remember when the covid-19 crisis first started and no one knew what medicine should be used for the patients there were some people who started to say that hydroxychloroquine will help in treating or in at least making the condition of the patients better now hydroxychloroquine is a very common drug it's given to malaria patients only if you remember america did not have this drug it's not because it's very difficult to manufacture but just because malaria cases are not found in us so they never had a stock of these medicines hydroxychloroquine while india had so india supplied a large amount of these hydroxychloroquine tablets to america during the covid-19 crisis so again that is a connection malaria as you know is a mosquito borne blood disease mainly it has crores of cases every single year across the entire country it mainly affects children under 5 children under 5 account for 80% of the deaths in the who african region uh it ha there have been multiple techniques that have been worked upon to try and curtail malaria genetic engineering technique the gene drive could help in eradicating this malaria that is caused by mosquitoes who is running an initiative called e2025 apart from the global technical strategy for malaria from 2016 to 2030 indian government itself in 2017 had launched a five year plan for malaria elimination but as you can imagine five years completed in 2022 but malaria still exists in india in 2022 in fact we had over 45000 cases so we are still grappling with that next topic there was study done on y chromosome and how it works exactly how has it evolved now as you know two chromosomes x and y are extremely important in determining the gender of the person and also the genetic makeup as you know females have x x chromosomes while a male would have x and y chromosome so y is one of the sex chromosome that is you should determine the biological sex of the person it carries important genes which are important for male development and around 66% of it is made up of repetitive dna sequence because it's repetitive it's called the junk dna y chromosome is important because it helps us in tracing paternal ancestry so who was your father then your grandfather great grandfather from the male side to determine your lineage y chromosome plays an important part the reason being it is passed on from father to the son that is why understanding and studying about y chromosome can give you important information about the male side of your ancestors these are the main differences between x and y chromosomes as you should know Y chromosome can be contributed sorry X chromosome can be contributed through eggs or sperm basically can be contributed by female also and can be contributed by male as well while Y chromosome it is only in the male so it can only be contributed through the sperm the size of the X chromosome is longer it has about 900 protein coding genes for Y chromosome the size is smaller X chromosome as i said is present in both males and females while the Y chromosome is only in the males about 5% of the entire human genome consists of X chromosomes and about 2% of the entire human genome is consisting of Y chromosome next the scientists have been trying to find out how the life began on earth and that is how 
we have something in the news called the protosterol biota scientists have discovered that eukaryotic life appeared to flourish much late in the history of our planet but we have found out that the first evidence of life on earth was actually underwater it is now i won't say it's a surprise most of the science now knows that if you look at evolution of life on earth it all began underwater so fish was the first living kind of organism and then it evolved to other species later on fossilized protosterol biota have been found in australia near a rock in northern territory it belongs to the eukaryotes family now as you know there are two types of these organisms that can be defined depending upon the makeup of their cell they are prokaryotes and eukaryotes prokaryotes are those that are represented by bacteria and archaea they mainly reproduce through binary fission they can be single celled or they can be multicellular as well with a well defined nucleus eukaryotes on the other hand can have multiple ways of reproduction they have a domain called eukarya and they have higher cellular specialization and much more complex organisms such as the human beings next is a news from maharashtra where two new kind of viruses were seen to affect tomato crops these two viruses were called mosaic virus now when we read about viruses there are different categories different classes of viruses depending upon their composition depending upon their behavior one of the categories of viruses is called the mosaic virus now what are these two viruses which were in the news the cmv the cucumber mosaic virus and tomv that is tomato mosaic virus these are the two viruses that hit the tomato crop production extremely deadly because if they are not treated in time it will result in 100% crop loss this virus is actually a parasite it destroys the plants the gardens and crops down to their molecular level and that is why it's very difficult to retrieve the plant if it is too late to treat them it's characterized by leaves that are mottled in with yellow green white dark green spots and streaks because it is similar like of the like the mosaic pattern uh if you have not seen a mosaic pattern you can just google and see the photo how the mosaic pattern looks like it usually uh, imagine a kind of a tile with very a lot of very different colors basically coming together that's a mosaic pattern so any plant that is affected by these viruses also has these bunch of different colors and that is why it's called as a mosaic virus it spreads to infected seeds samplings it can also spread to nursery workers hands and it spreads from one plant to the other and the entire harvest can be destroyed within a small period of time it's not harmful to humans it's a plant specific virus there is no cure as such for infected plant the best control is to sanitize and remove the infected plant note from the nearby plant so you can't save that particular plant which has been infected but you can just hope to save the other plants in the vicinity that is how difficult it is to treat the mosaic virus next in we have a disease that was in the news called the brucellosis brucellosis is a disease that can impact both animals and humans human to human transmission is much uh, much lesser or there are much lesser chances much rarer animal to animal transmission is much higher there was a case of a dairy farmer in kerala that was diagnosed with brucellosis disease it's a bacterial infection caused by brucella bacteria and affects as i said both animals and humans transmitted mainly through contaminated animal products or direct contact it can affect people of all the ages but as i said people to people person to person transmission is extremely rare the disease usually has symptoms such as fever chill sweats headache etc these are the symptoms that you will see in most of the other diseases as well so nothing specific the treatment involves the use of antibiotics because it is caused by bacteria obviously it can last many months as well the ivri which is asia's uh, biggest research institute for veterinary sciences they have developed the brucella arbortis vaccine specifically for prevention of brucellosis in the dairy sector so there is a vaccine that is available who has also recognized this disease as a neglected zoonotic disease 
Now, there are a lot of disease that are neglected. And the reason why they are neglected is, see, for the pharma companies to work and to undertake all this research to develop medicines or vaccines, they need to show or they need to see profit in it. And these companies will only see profit if either there is a disease that is very, very, very widespread so that many people will buy their medicine or if it's a disease that is mainly affected in developed countries because in developed countries, governments and the people have the capacity to buy much more expensive medicines. In developing countries, least developed countries, they don't have a lot of buying capacity. So the companies, the pharma companies don't want to put a lot of capital into research and that is why a lot of these diseases remain neglected. WHO estimates that there are more than 5 lakh new cases of brucellosis in humans each year but again the majority of them are in developing countries and that is why not a lot of attention has been given even by the pharma companies to develop drugs specifically for it. Next news something called the HeLa cells. What are these cells? These are very unique cells which are considered as immortal cell line means they keep on regenerating till perpetuity means till the end of life they just keep on reproducing that is very very rare usually cells have a specific life and after that they stop to reproduce this is something that is not seen in the hella cells in the hella cells we have seen these are cells which are first human cells to be successfully cloned in 1953 these are cells that have been used for research for a lot of purposes and their interesting abilities again as i said they keep on reproducing hella stands for henrietta lacks henrietta lacks was the first patient from which these cells were actually derived this was the first patient the african american woman who contributed these cells during her treatment for the cervical cancer remember these were the first human cell that was successfully cloned in 1953 they're important because they can keep on reproducing and they can replicate continuously in culture. Now culture, you would hear this word culture time and time again. Culture basically is a word that you use related to diagnostic when you undertake certain diagnostic test. Culture basically is kind of an artificial uh, environment created for the cells to multiply or to see if there is some reaction to the cells. For example, you have your urine test. Now urine test, one of those tests is called urine culture test. So basically that is kept for some time and seen whether there is some bacterial activity, whether there is some other activity in that and whether we can find out some other important details from that particular urine. These cells have been very helpful for vaccine development, cancer research and a lot of other research as well, drug testing, etc. As I told you, these cells are unique because they keep on replicating. And because they keep on replicating, they allow the scientists, they allow the researchers to have many more chances at trying to figure out a solution. When you have a specific cell that does not replicate, it just basically it's limited in number, then you have to be much more sure of your treatment and research. But with these kind of cells that keep on replicating, you have many more chances of undertaking research and trying to see if you can find out the perfect solution. These are immortal cell lines because they can divide indefinitely under the right conditions. These are extremely, extremely valuable for scientific research. They can be grown in large quantities. They also provide a very consistent reproducible model. Also, these human cell cultures die within, usually the other human cells die within a specific number of cell divisions after which they do not survive. That process is called seen sense so again it is very rare for a cell to keep on multiplying now interestingly it's very similar to how cancer operates see what is cancer cancer is an uncontrolled growth of certain cells in your body which start to destroy your body hella cells on the other hand are not that although they also keep on continuously multiplying but that's not an unlimited or unregulated multiplication you can actually keep that in check next xenotransplantation a few months back there was a news that for the first time ever a human has received a pig kidney so there was a kidney transplantation where a pig's kidney was given to a human but then the news came in very recently that that person who got this kidney has actually passed away 
so there were these two reasons why this concept of zero transplantation came in the picture this person who was given the ki kids uh, the kidney of the pig was in march this year itself but did not survive more than a couple of months after that now why is it in the news because now there are a lot of research going on to basically have lab grown organs rather than taking it from any animal why not grow the organs in the lab itself chinese scientists have grown humanized kidneys which have human cells so in order to ensure that maybe we don't need to take it from the animals these kind of organs may be grown in the labs itself zero transplantation is a process that involves transplantation into a human either live cells tissue or organs from a non human animal source so non human animal source for example such as a pig these cells or tissues are called xenografts or xenotransplants now it's important to understand why are pigs used for this now this is not the first case of a pig being used to transplant an organ the for the kidney it was first ever but this is not the only time when animals and their organs have been used now pigs are a very popular source of taking these organs and then transplanting to humans why first they have similar organs as compared to humans and they have a large litter size now what is this litter basically means the number of children that they have so when a pig reproduces usually there is a large number of uh, pups that are actually born so pig usually when they reproduce they might have 8 10 12 babies meaning that their population is not very small because one of the concerns that happen when you take a pig and then you take away their organ is you are dwindling their population maybe if they are limited in number they will go extinct that is an ethical issue so an ethical question is is raised basically about their population about their growth so when you can prove that this animal has a lot of population the population is not going anywhere that becomes easier so that is why we have chosen pigs as compared to animals such as monkeys and apes that are also similar to humans because of their large litter size again litter is that group of babies that they reproduce they have short gestation period also so short gestation period means the number of months it takes for them to reproduce a baby for example in humans the gestation period is 9 months so pigs have a shorter gestation period they can reproduce quickly and they reproduce much much more and that is why the lesser ethical concerns of using pigs for such processes as compared to the other animals also the heart valves of the pigs have been successfully used in humans pig intestines can produce blood thinner also the skin grafts of the pig are being used for burns when uh, your skin burns it has to be replaced pig skins are used because they are similar to the composition of the human skins moving on another news that was discussed around the year was a nipah virus the nipah virus was in the news not mainly because of the patients because patient have been found earlier as well but because its antibodies have been detected in bats in wynard now it's an important discovery because when you find out an antibody for a certain virus and you discover the source of those antibodies means you can then take them out from that source and then you can then give it to the human so that the patients can be treated in kerala a lot of health workers for example have been found to be infected with the nipah virus it's a zoonotic disease means transmitted from animals to humans mainly the fruit bats are the natural host of this virus this is very very dangerous in kerala a lot of people have uh, gotten this virus it has a very high mortality rate as well uh it has seen outbreaks in other parts of asia as well in bangladesh india and some other southeast asian countries have also seen some cases of the nipah virus symptoms are similar to many other diseases headache fever throat infection etc the treatment again becomes a problem because right now there is no licensed treatment available for this virus so basically right now you try to treat the symptoms if someone has fever give them the medicine of fever if someone has muscle pain try to give them the medicine of the muscle pain so that is again a very challenging situation where you don't know how to treat the disease because the underlying cause is not treated you are just treating the symptoms and that is what is happening with the nipah virus now that antibody has been discovered in a certain bat 
we may see some kind of treatment coming in but it will take a long time these things have to undergo a lot of research and trials before being rolled out in the market commercially the nipah virus is transmitted with direct contact with infected animals such as bats pigs etc or if you consume food that has been contaminated by the body fluids of the infected animal for example if you uh, have a palm sap or fruit contaminated by a bat if bat has tasted that fruit and then you consume it then obviously you have chances of getting infected close contact with a person having this virus or exchange of their body fluids etc can also lead to transmission of this disease from one person to the other next the last news for this class is the arogya maitri cube this is the world's first portable disaster hospital what exactly is this so basically the government what they have done is in just these cubes they have basically set up an entire hospital in simple terms whatever is the necessary equipment to run an hospital all these equipments have been made small uh, shorter smaller in size and they have been fit into these cubes how is it important let's say if there's a natural disaster if there is some disaster and evacuation has to undertake right now what you do is you take out patients from there and then send them to the hospital one by one but it basically results in loss of time so better would be to set up a hospital at that place itself where you see a disaster you can't take up the entire hospital setup so what do you do try and take a portable setup and this is where the portable hospital comes in the picture this is called the arogya maitri cube this is the world's first portable disaster hospital do remember that it can be airlifted assembled into 72 cubes that contain all the essential medical equipment and supplies it's a part of project bhishma bhishma stands for bharat health initiative for sahyog hit and maitri it can go outside india as well and not just within the country for example you see issues such as earthquakes in nepal so wherever we send some relief operations we can send these portable hospitals as well it can support 200 survivors for 48 hours during a natural disaster it includes operation theaters even mini icus ventilators blood test equipment x ray machine even a cooking station for cooking food etc it's a part of the arogya maitri project to supply essential medicines to any nearby developing country that has been affected by such disasters this brings to the end of this class thank you so much for joining in i'll see you in the next one if you have still not done that do it the subscribe and the like button invite your other friends also to take advantage of these classes thank you so much bye bye jai hind